Hey everybody, welcome back to today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Rosemary Brushes and Company in uh, the UK. They are a great uh, brush manufacturer. They come out with the highest quality brushes. And full disclosure, they gave me three brushes worth about $30. I bought about $300 worth of brushes from them because I really enjoy their product and I needed to restock up on brushes. Thank you, Rosemary Brushes. Uh, the link will be in the description below. Definitely check them out, they have great brushes. No matter how much you take care of your brushes, the brushes are going to lose their shape. So this is a brand new brush, and you can see it's kind of clean and it has a nice shape to it. And this is an older brush that's kind of blown out. There are many different methods to clean a brush, and we're gonna go over all of those. You can just use Terp, which we have in here. You can use um, Brush Cleaner, which I have here, not sponsored. And you can also use Murphy's Oil. Murphy's Oil is not sponsoring this video. The main thing that you want to understand is when you're cleaning your brush, you're trying to take care of it and not lose its shape. So when you're cleaning your brush, and this is the new one, when you're cleaning it, you want to, you want to go in the direction of the bristles. You do not want to push up. I'll use this brush as the example because it's old. But you do not want to like, oh, let me, let me work in the the soap and let me go the opposite way. You don't want to do that. You're using the soap. You want to go around, around. You just want to keep working it around in the same direction because you're trying to keep the shape of your bristles. And then when you're done, depending on what you're do, depending on what you want to do or how much you want to get into it, you can actually put conditioner. You can either leave uh, the soap, like once you get it all cleaned, you can leave the soap in here and get it nice and shaped and then the next time you use it you just rinse it off in the turp or what some people do and what rosemary brushes actually recommends is some people put conditioner in the brush they work it into the brush uh, that way it'll hold its shape and you shape it i'm going to put a another video a link probably i guess right here once I make it, and it's going to be about how to care for your brushes, how to travel with them, how to keep the shape, because there definitely is a way to do that. I learned all of this actually through years of oil painting, but also it, working in construction, uh, talking to my brother in construction uh, back in the day in the 60s, 70s, and 80s when people were still using oil paint. They would actually have a method for cleaning their oil painting brushes, and the main method that they used was terp. And they would actually keep the, the sheaths or the, the, the paper or cardboard sheaths that the brushes came in so that they would keep the shape. Over time, there's nothing you can do. It's going to lose its shape. But the more you take care of your brush, the longer it's going to last. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we need some dirty brushes. All right, well, let's get started. So the first thing, you might be coming here like I did years ago when you have a bunch of old brushes, maybe like this one that are just, uh, and I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see how blown out this is. Hopefully it's focusing on that, you can see how blown out it is. Uh, maybe you're coming here because you have a bunch of old brushes and you're like, oh my gosh, this paint is dried, how do I fix it? Well, if you're getting to this point, the brushes are, especially if it's oil paint, more than likely the brushes are ruined it's not going to be the same shape. Now you can still clean them and use the brushes for other stuff, but to get that sharp, crisp edge, or if you want a sharp, crisp brush, that brush is gone. But you can, but definitely clean them because you can use them for other effects. There's a brush dip that you can get. So at the end of the night, say you're going to paint the next day, you don't have to, you don't have to, um, clean your brush that night. You can use the brush dip, put it in the brush dip, soak up the brush, and you just lay it down on your brush holder or lay it down on some towels or something. And you're gonna paint the next night or the next day, and so that'll keep it fresh and you just wipe off the brush dip the next day. But today what we're gonna talk about is cleaning them. So if you get to this point where you need this, and I'll put all the products I'm using in the description below. So, you're gonna need this brush cleaner and restore from Winsor Newton. It'll definitely clean the brush, it's very toxic, so you definitely wanna put this outside or another room. Uh, get a you wanna get a glass jar, do not get a plastic jar, this stuff will eat through it. So you get a glass jar, you're supposed to put it just up to the top of the, uh, to where the ferrule is, 
and that's it because if you go any further it's going to mess up all this metal i put like maybe 10 or 15 brushes in my jar and we're not sponsored by clausen either um, i put all my brushes in the jar and you're supposed to leave it i think for 24 hours or 12 hours 24 hours i came back the next day and all of this was just starting to, to melt off and I actually had to scrub them clean. Definitely be careful with this stuff. You just, you fill it up, you fill this up a little bit and then you just put, put the brushes in and leave it in there for 24 hours. Come back, you actually are gonna have to go to Home Depot and I'll put a link in the description. You're gonna need to steal one of these. So you're gonna have to run it across like that. And when you're doing it, and I'll, I'll zoom in on the sink, but when you're doing it, you wanna have your brush like that kind of splayed out and you're raking out all the junk. So you're trying to clean this out and that's one of the main reasons that this is gonna lose its shape is because you're raking through this and uh, that's causing the, the brush to lose its shape, it could, especially because this is a steel bristle. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this brush and we're gonna use the soap method. And all the steps, the first thing you're gonna do is all this excess paint, you're gonna wipe off with your, and you're gonna go in the direction of the bristles, get all that paint. And then you're gonna take your, uh, your turp and you're gonna clean it and you're gonna get as much of it as you can out in that turp you want to get some warm water and then what you do is you start swishing it around and you start cleaning it this is an old brush I can, so I can show you I'm not going against the bristles this way I'm switching around this way to keep the shape of the brush and then you Get the water, water, clean it off, dump this out. Cause you're basically what you're trying to do is get it as clean as possible. And you have to keep dumping out the dirty, the dirty water in here. So as you clean it, you want to keep replacing the water. And at some point it's going to be clear, like, well, not clear, but it's going to be milky or a little clouded just from the soap, but there's not going to be paint coming out anymore. Just dump the water out and I'm good to go. So at this point, you can either do two things. You can keep, you can put a conditioner in there and just work it into the bristles and to keep it shape. Or what I do um, is you just work up a lather and you just leave it on there and you've shaped your brush. If you get paint up in this area here, you don't want to do that because what happens is as paint gets up in that area, it's gonna it's gonna make the bristles splay out. So you wanna keep that area clean. And how you do that is if you start getting paint up in the air in there and you're trying to get it out, you're gonna put your you're gonna get one of these. It's the same as a steel one, except this is plastic. It's a little a little less aggressive. And you're gonna put the brush up against the sink like this so that the bristles kind of splay out just a little bit. Don't be rough. I'm trying to keep the life of your brush. And you just you gently scrub it scrub it out flip it scrub it out and the same thing you just wash it get some so get some soap in there again and the same thing you just scrub it out and be gentle about it i like i just like using the soap to keep the shape and so that's one brush we have that's one method of cleaning the next step that we're going to do is the murphy's oil method so for this one we're going to get the the big boy the big boy that we got all messed up and same thing we start with taking as much paint off as we can with the with the napkin then we um, put it in the turp and we're trying to get as much out on the with the turp as we can the next step is you want to go hot water on this you fill up your cup you don't want that much murphy's oil maybe just like a cap full or two not that much you don't want too much of a good thing, so just, just a couple capfuls. You get your brush, and all, and same thing. All you're doing is swishing it around. Just, all you're doing is just, uh, if I can show that, is swish it around. And you can see that the water is getting a little, a little dirty. I'm gonna work it out. And with the Murphy's oil, actually, you don't need to put conditioner in because the Murphy's oil has actually acts as a conditioner. So I like using, I like using all these methods, actually. Um, I like using the Murphy's oil the most because it cleans out the stuff really well. Again, the main thing is you don't want to get the paint up in here. If you start getting it up in this area, <clears throat> your, your brush, like I mentioned before, is going to start splaying out. 
but it's harder to get the paint out. So the reason I like Murphy's oils so much is I try to keep the paint out from up here as much as possible. And when I do that, it's, it's super easy to clean this stuff out. So you just keep doing that. You're, we're good. I'm going to dump that out. Um, if I was using these brushes more, it'd be a little bit dirtier. I'd have to do this two or three times. Well, uh, I'm sorry, three or four times. But since it's not that dirty, I'm only gonna have to do it twice. So again, you want to keep going. You want to keep going until your brush is not releasing any paint. That's how you know when your brush is clean. So this is good and clean. Okay. So we're good to go. That's the Murphy oil method. And if you want to even get, uh, kick it up a notch from there, even though it's conditioned, you can get a hair conditioner and put work hair conditioner in there and you'll be good. So the final method we're going to do is similar to watercolor, but we're not using water, we're using turp. And when I was doing construction, this is how my brother explained it to me, how they would clean oil brushes back in the day. And actually there's painters that still clean their brushes this way. So what you do is you have a bunch of different jars uh, and, you're, and they're going to be filled with turp. And you want to go from, from dirty to clean. They have uh, glass jars. I would recommend any glass jars. This is a, uh, these are plastic. Uh, I'm just shooting this today and I'm going to use the turp for something else. So I would recommend getting glass jars. Uh, there's a great little turp holder. I'll have a link in the description below for this turp holder, which I really like. It has a, a seal for trapping air. And then there's a glass one that has a metal coil in it to rub the brushes against to work the paint out. I would not do this method if you live in a studio like I do, because these are going to kick out, th this is going to kick out fumes, unless you have a bunch of these that have that seal, but they cost like 30 bucks a piece. So if you live in a studio, I would not do this method. I would either do the Murphy's oil method or I would do the, the soap method. Uh, that's probably your best bet. So again, we have paint in this brush. We're going to work it out. And you want to start from the dirtiest to the cleanest, and this is definitely the dirtiest. So I'm going to clean it here first and try to get as much paint out as I can. And so if you get three glass jars, you can just keep uh, the, the turp and uh, work it around. Now you want to get maybe five or six glass jars because as, so I'm going to go, this is going to be my next dirty the clean, this is going to be a little bit cleaner and this is going to be the cleanest. Now as time goes, the cleanest one is going to start getting dirty and this is going to be super dirty. So you can move this into here. You have a new, you have a new jar of nothing but clean turp. So you want to, you want to rotate, rotate around. So we got that. So now what we do is we go into here and we clean it out. And actually it looks pretty clean. There wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of, so actually that brush is pretty clean. Let's see if we can do this. Let me just wipe a little bit out so we can try to, okay. So you go in here and, and as you can see, it's uh, a bit cloudy. So you just keep working it, working it around. You're trying to get as much as you can out before you go to the next step. And what I would do is get like a five gallon bucket. And when you're done with the turp, dump it in the bucket and then take it to the, the waste recycler. You don't want to just dump this stuff. So definitely, if you're going to use turp, definitely get a five gallon bucket. Now we're, we'll go to this one. And as you can see, it's already, it's already pretty clean. It's, it's staying pretty clear. So we're good. And then if it was still giving out, if it was still giving off paint, which it would, if I was using these a lot, um, I would have to go to the next one. And actually, you can't really see it. It's a little bit cloudy. Um, so I'll just go to this next one. And this one is clean. With this method, I would put conditioner in this because once the turp is done, it kind of dries this all out. And so I would put conditioner in there. The bigger the brush, the more paint it's going to hold. So you're going to go from here, swishing this around, to here, to here, to here. And it's, it's not going to... It's going to take a while to get clean because there's a lot of paint in here. The overall goal is to have no pigment in your brush left. So whether you're using the turp method, the Murphy's oil method, or the soap method, 
you want to keep cleaning it until the brush is not releasing pigment. So that's it. That's how you wash your brushes. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. I definitely use the links in the description below to help support this channel. And also comment down below. What methods do you guys use to wash your brushes? Do you wash your brushes? What do you do? Would love to hear from you on that. So, hey, have a great day. We'll talk to you next time.